Hey guys, welcome to Jim Off Pickup, and today we're going to cover the topic of taking a girl home in the first two hours of the night. Okay? Now we have other coaches out there, RSD Julian, Valentino Cohen, Alex RSD, who later became Alex Social and the four-week natural, that say the first half of the night doesn't count, or you can't pull a girl in the first half of the night, so don't bother trying. I completely disagree with this. I pull in the first half of the night, and for those who don't know what pull means, it means take a girl home. I pull a girl in the first half of the night as much, if not more, than in the second half of the night. Okay? So real quick, I'm going to reference those clips that I was just speaking about with Julian and Alex and Valentino. Okay? So let's roll those clips. So it's very rare in the first two hours, as we say, that you're going to fuck a girl. Sometimes it happens, sometimes you have like the bathroom pulls, like quick bathroom pulls when the girl's ready, but most of the time, people are just not ready at that time of the night. Alright, let's find the students, let's make this happen. Again, first half doesn't matter. Yeah. All that matters is the very end. Do you leave with the girl at all? Yeah. And that can happen five minutes before, you don't know. So it's just have fun. Just, like, but if you try to like take the girl home to the hotel too early, then it's only going to create defensiveness and evasiveness and all, like a lot of predictability. So I'm going to wait as long as I possibly can. Right? The longer that you can stay with a chick in a bar, building a tension where she's nearby you, knows that you can escalate, knows that you can approach other chicks with her, that you're not trying to pull. Okay, so you guys see... <laughs> They're all saying this, right? And there's many other coaches, like I just grabbed a few. This is like a big myth in the community, okay? And it's costing you guys a lot of results, okay? Because I have lots of polls on camera and, I, and even when I don't have it on camera, I've done this many, many, many times, okay? So right now I'm going to teach you how to actually do this and I'm gonna show you a full length infield video taking what I would rate a nine, you probably will too when you see your body. Um, taking a nine home, pulling a nine in the first half of the night, okay? I'm gonna show you the entire, usually I keep my full interactions for my product, but I'm gonna show you the entire interaction start to finish of meeting the girl all the way up to taking her home, okay? And I'm gonna break it down with picture in picture analysis, telling you what's going on every step of the way, okay? It's only a 10 minute interaction. Surprise, surprise, you can pull quickly even in the first half of the night. You don't even need to have a long interaction. Now these other coaches say, girls don't want to leave in the first half of the night because they want to experience the whole movie, that's what Julian says. Or RST Alex thinks that you can only take girls home at the very end of the night right when the bar is about to close. This is all false. I don't pay attention um, to what time of the night it is when I'm trying to pull the girl. I only pay attention to compliance and non-compliance. Okay, now I'll make a whole separate video just really getting into the details of pulling. If you haven't watched my night game video, of how to run a night game interaction, watch that. And that goes into all the details about how to structure the, the night, how to structure your sets, how you should be pulling, when you should be switching to getting a phone number closed, if the logistics are poor. If you don't know what I'm talking about, watch the night game video, okay? So, I'm gonna get into that infield breakdown, the whole pull, the whole start to finish pull, which is like a huge fucking gift. I kinda wanted to like make this video be like a nuke, um, as you've noticed, I have better lighting, I have a DSLR video camera right now, a uh, professional microphone. The other professional microphone that I had to mount on the camera that was like a shotgun mic is incompatible with this camera, so right now I'm using a Yeti uh, podcast mic. I'm either going to get a lavalier mic, my ex stole my last one, or I will start recording to an external device with the shotgun mic. Anyways, I've got nice softbox lights right here, umbrella lights, I might even put more lights above, I'm gonna, I'm gonna experiment with that. I had professional intros and outros done for each of my videos. Um, I also have some video editors now on staff that are gonna be doing some fancy edits. I'm gonna be able to show like little clips from other coaches in fields, stuff like that. I'm gonna have my picture in picture breakdown with a nice camera. So all good shit, right? I knew I needed to upgrade my production level. My content is gonna continue to be fire. I've gotten tons of good feedback on it already. Uh, everyone's like, this is so refreshing, this is life changing, all this shit. So I'm giving you down and dirty, here's how you pull, here's how you close the house, here's how you set dates to the house. And I'm gonna keep these a lot more on task too, like um, some of my longer videos, I would go off on a whole bunch of tangents and I was also like getting drunk and shit. I'm not gonna be 
drinking during my videos or looking at my cell phone anymore during my videos, getting distracted by girls texting me. And I'm gonna be using this high-end professional equipment. Even like, I have to fuck with the aperture and the shutter settings on the camera, but I'm even gonna have like the depth of field with the background is like a little bit blurry and stuff like that. Okay, <clears throat> so what do you do to pull in the first half of the night? So the way I do it, and I only tell this usually on boot camps or on my product, but I'm gonna give you guys the exact script that I say now, or that I say in the bars and clubs, okay? So I say to the girl, um, I live close by. All these different statements are lowering compliance thresholds. You're trying to get her to comply with this request to go to your house, so you make it very easy for her to do so. Okay, so the components are, I live close by, I only live a few blocks away, I only live five minutes away. Another big component is you have to come back. You have to come back, okay? Let's just go for 30 minutes. Okay, that's the other big component. You're not gonna go for very long. We're just gonna go for 30 minutes, rip a couple shots. Why? Because drinks here are expensive. That's giving her like a motivation. Okay, so I say, this is, how, this is like the exact script. Drinks here are expensive. I live really close by, like five minutes away. Let's go rip a couple shots, and then we'll come like right back. We'll only be gone like 30 minutes. So that's, that's like the script I say. Okay, you're not going far, you're not going for long, you have to come back. It's to do shots because drinks are expensive. A very high amount of the time, you're gonna get one main objection from her, which is, oh, I would, but I can't leave my friends. So like at my boot camps, I'm like, after you say this script, you like kind of pause and you're like, okay, say it. And she's like, well, I can't leave my friends. But you know that's coming, okay? So don't let that throw you off your game. It's just a standard bullshit response. Just because she's like, I don't, you know, I want to make sure I'm going to be coming back. Like, I, I want to make sure I'm going to be comfortable and stuff. So I'll be like, it's cool. I have to come back too. My friend, and this is, this is actually how I say it. I teach this on boot camp and my products. Like, my friends have a table here, and one of them is visiting from out of town, so I have to come back. And that doesn't even make any logical sense, because if you know nightclubs, if you have a table, that's free drinks. Okay? But I say, I have to come back. My friends have a table one day from out of town. And, and, and it works like every time. The girl's never like, oh, let's go have the free drinks at the table, or why is your friend that's visiting from out of town not coming? <laughs> good, good questions. That doesn't come up. So you say that, and then you just keep repeating those other things. So you're like, no, don't worry, we're, we're not going to be gone for very long. We'll be gone like 30 minutes, like 20 minutes, whatever. It's really close. What kind of liquor do you like? Now you're, now you're drawing into the frame. Oh, uh, tequila? Cool, I have tequila. And I, I talk about in other videos, you should keep like a kind of every liquor at your house because they have specific tastes. So you have tequila, you have vodka, you have uh, whiskey, rum, and gin. Those are like the main five. Um, so you're like, cool, I have tequila. Let's go back and have like two shots. Like I want to like get a nice buzz here, but the drinks are fucking expensive. And you can even say that when it's like dollar drinks. It like doesn't they don't register with these logical points. Like it's it's insane. Like it literally can be like dollar drinks, like fifty cent drinks. You're like yeah, drinks here are expensive. Let's just go. And this we even had uh, as just like for shits and giggles. Like during the daytime in a boot camp, we like use this on a girl on the street and pulled her during the daytime. And it was totally out of context. It just, it's just like a convincing. <laughs> Like set of lines, like we we really we literally wrote, we had a student do it actually. We're like, yo, say the fucking drinks are expensive shit. The girl's like, on a, like texting on like like a street corner or whatever, like waiting to cross the street. And the student rolls up and he, or no, oh no, my business partner did this. My business partner just to like fuck around. And then we just gave it to the student. He's like, yo, drinks here are expensive. Um, we live really close by. Like we're gonna go rip a couple of shots. Like you should totally come with us. And she's like, oh, well, I'm waiting for an Uber. And we're like, oh, we'll just call you Uber from the house. Like we don't want to like pay all this money for drinks. Let's just go have the drinks at the house. And she's like, well, I have to be at the airport in like two hours or whatever. And we're like, it's cool. We'll over you are from the house. All right, let's go. And you start leading. And she's like, okay. And then we're like, hey, meet our friend. And pulls back with the student. Um, so we kind of did the work for him. But the point is, you're kind of like making it really easy for her to go along with it. You're like, we're not going to go for very long. It's cool. We have to come back. Now, say that she's like really pressing, like, um, you know, I can't go, I, my, my friends, my friends, I can't go, I have to stay with my friends, but, you know, she's really pressing that, even after you say, like, I have to come back too. What I'll do, again, I've talked about this in other videos, pinky promise. I'll be like, listen, I have to come back, like, look at me, I'm like, look at me, I have to come back. I'm like, pinky promised me that we're coming back, so what am I doing now? I flip the objection on her, it's like kind of like a sales technique, I flip the objection back on her, 
And pinky promise, is, for those of you that don't know, it's like a thing where it means like promise, like this has to, like we have to take this like very seriously, okay? So I'm like, listen, we have to come back. I'm like, no, look at me, like we have to come back. And she's like, okay. I'm like, pinky promise me we're coming back. And she does. I'm like, kiss her, it doesn't count. I'm like, so we're gonna come back, right? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, all right, let's go. And you just start leading, all right? And it's not gonna work 100% of the time, but this is how I do it. This is how we do it. <laughs> So like, seriously, pulling the first half of the night isn't that big of a deal. And it's almost like, I've, I think I'd even do it more than the second half of the night because if they're coming back, like when, they're, when you're trying to pull in the second half of the night, like she's committing to like leaving the whatever kind of event, she's like missing out on hanging out with her friends and the DJ and everything else. And she's okay, I'm going, I'm committing to this guy for the rest of the night. It's almost like a little bit more compliance than to say, let's go rip some shots and come right back, okay? And lots of times, when you go to rip the shots, like you're gonna end up like making out in the car, you're gonna hooking up at your house, and like you might not even go back out. Okay, so that's how you do it. I'm trying to keep these videos shorter, not go off on all these tangents, not um, keep reiterating the same points. Rewatch it if you want to hear the points again. I gave you the script of what to say. I taught you how to deal with their objections, and now we're gonna watch a real life infield um, where I pull a nine, and then afterwards, after the infield, make sure you stick around to the end because we're gonna go over like showing like scenes from her being my fuck buddy, like her getting ready to go out for a night, us doing like a wet t-shirt contest with her, and I blurred the nipples when, when her shirt gets wet, so that, I don't know what's a lot on YouTube or whatever. But, thank you guys for watching, that's how you pull in the first half of the night, so go out and try it, it's fucking easy, okay? And don't pay attention to whether, what time of the night is when you're trying to pull. Alright, so here we go, without further ado, we're gonna move on to the infield breakdown. Cool, alright, so we're gonna um, break down an infield footage pull here. This is from a night game situation. It's from a bar. Hold on, let me just bring myself in on the webcam. I actually just created this whole breakdown and then like fucked it up at the end and didn't save it. So I need to redo the entire thing, which is gonna be fucking awesome. I got a chick on her way. As you see here, I'm wearing, come on. I'm wearing the uh, 777 shirt. Uh, if you look at my Instagram, I posted number uh, 754, 755, 756, the past three nights, back to back to back, all from dates. Um, like I say, in my tactical game breakdown and in the night game video, most of your closes are going to come from dates. Um, I mean, I still pull, Sonny and I pulled, Sonny Arvado and I pulled on Saturday night, these two med students, it was like fucking textbook, our second set of the nights, both came to our respective houses, both slept over and left the next day and then it was funny because Sonny was like did you use a con uh, condom with yours I was like nope I was like did you he's like nope and then uh <laughs> what happened I was like yeah I busted on mine's face he's like oh yeah me too I was like awesome yeah I mean we're still gonna pull but you're gonna get a lot more of your latest from dates all right so we're just gonna jump right into this this is uh first half the night pull um and it's, by the way, I wanted to say, I did all the edits in this whole video that you're watching with the, um, with the pulling in the first half of the night. Like all this shit you see with the other coaches and the effects and like all this shit, I did all that. I had a couple guys help me out to do the blurs. This is a, a relatively new infield, um, so the faces weren't blurred. Did I have a whole stockpile of infield with the faces already blurred? But I wanted to use this one because the chick's pretty hot and it's a 10 minute interaction. So it's not going to take forever to break down. Like a lot of my polls these days are like in 30 to 45 minutes, which is going to take a lot more time. So I will walk you through this, kind of explain what's going on in my mind. So here's the opener. We'll just start it right off. Yo, I saw you earlier. I wanted to meet you really fast. I saw you earlier. I wanted to meet you real fast. As I said before, um, I can't believe I'm, I, I just literally went through this whole thing and it all got fucking deleted. All right. Oh, but one other quick point about the shirt. Uh, I have a girl coming over in 30 minutes. Straight to the house, 18 year old Latina. That's gonna probably be 777 and I'll wear the shirt on the date and probably snap a picture after I close, put it on Instagram. Hooray. So, I say, I wanna meet you, I saw you earlier, I wanted to meet you. Are you Latina? Are you Latina? A lot of times I'll ask them about their ethnicity. She very obviously was Latina, so that's why I said it. Uh -huh. Are you Latina? Yeah. I just moved here from Puerto Rico, I was living there for like a year. So I'm like, I just moved here from Puerto Rico, I was in there for a year. So what I'll do typically, 
if they're like ethnic is I'll try to guess their ethnicity and then they'll tell me. And I've traveled all over the world at this point. So a lot of times I've been to where they are from. Like if, if it's an Asian chick, I'll be like, oh, you still live in Beijing. And like, it was crazy being six foot four because all the people, the chicks are short and girls would take selfies with me. Ha ha ha. Or the parts of Europe, I can relate to that. Whatever it may be, but if it's a place I haven't been, I would usually say that I've, I've lived there for some period of time. So like with Brazilian girls, they're like, oh yeah, hey, I'm from Brazil. I'll be like, oh cool, I used to live in Sao Paulo for like three months, right? Like I know which cities are in which countries that are like the popular cities. And I'll just use that as like a talking point. I'll just, I'll just make it up, okay? It helps, it helps you kind of like relate to them. You don't have to do that, that's just what I do. What? I was just living in Puerto Rico for a year. I fucking, I, I really like Latinas. I wanna to talk to you a thing. <laughs> So here, here's us talking. So <clears throat> I'm going to explain to, here, to you guys what just happened here. So this is like the hottest chick in the bar this night. Like I would rate her like a nine. You're going you're gonna to see better pictures of her body later on. Um, better video clips of her body. But she has no investment built with me at this point, right? All I've done is opened her. She tried to like walk away and like sidestep me. And I said, hold on, I want to talk to you real quick. I want to talk to you real quick. I, I kind of like move a little bit. And like played off like it's not a big deal, right? She has no investment and she's really hot, so she's getting hit up by a lot of dudes. And most dudes are usually low value. So, you know, that was just like some token shit where like I'm talking to her and she kind of like stepped to the side a little bit. I was like, hold on, I want to talk to you real quick. What Latina are you? I'm Puerto Rican. So I'm like, what kind of Latina are you? She's like Puerto Rican, which obviously she didn't hear me before saying I lived in Puerto Rico because she didn't comment on that when I said that I lived there. So now I'm like Building rapport over that about how I live there. No shit! I just told you I was living in Oregon for a year. I thought I knew. I like you. <laughs> All right, so now I'm just flirting with her. Keep in mind, I'm like I'm six four seven. I'm having to bend down, but I'm like in her physical space. I have my one arm around her back, and I'm like, yeah, I could tell you're Puerto Rican. Ha ha ha! And, I'm, and now everything that's flowing out of me is these subcommunications, right? Like these positive alpha subcommunications. So. An important point to make is that watch my video uh, mindsets to have in the club, but I'm not like rolling in to the club or into any interaction doubting whether or not I'm going to get the girl. I, I go into the club assuming I can get any girl in there. Before I approach a girl, I assume, yes, of course she's going to like me. Yes, of course it's going to go awesome. There's a high chance I'm going to pull her, blah, blah, blah. And all that flows out through my subcommunications, right? And the story I told and the, the part that just got deleted, story I told... I was running a boot camp in like 2014 with an Indian kid, virgin, and he was like, dude, he's like, the reason why girls are so receptive to you is because you've been with hundreds of girls. I think I was at like 250 count or 300 or maybe 300, 350. And he's like, you've been with a lot of girls at this point, and so they can sense that, and that's why they like you. And he's like, I've been with zero, so that's why they don't like me. And I was like, listen, dude, you don't have a fucking post-it note on your forehead that advertises your lay count. I mean... If I close tonight, I actually have a, a print on my shirt advertising my lay count. <laughs> but I was like, if I rolled up weak, like this was during the boot camp, I was like, I was like if I rolled up weak and I was like, uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, the chick doesn't know that I've been with 300 something girls. She's going to fucking think I'm a loser because I'm rolling in weak and all my subcommunications communicate that. If I doubted that I could get her, or I thought I wasn't good enough or I, I was trying to win her over or whatever, rather than just assuming all those things and assuming I'm awesome and assuming I'm the shit then she would probably blow me off pretty quickly and she wouldn't become attracted to me. So I'm like, you need to roll in thinking you're the shit. No one here knows your lay count. You could be like a fucking rock star, okay? You're not dressing like one, we, we fix that too, but, um, <laughs> or having the hygiene of a normal person. But he ended up getting two makeouts and he fucking pulled a girl. And me and my old business partner that was running the program, we joked that he was like the coolest virgin in the club. And it was just like a fucking switch in his mind where he realized that he doesn't need to um, have that negative mindset and chicks will respond to him. If he believes that he's cool and awesome and he carries that in his presence, the chicks are going to believe that he's cool and awesome. All right, so I'm just acting like the man here and the chick is being very receptive to it. Like contrast that to if I was like stiff and robotic and I wasn't, having direct eye contact and I wasn't leaning in and putting my hand around her back and like talking like I'm the man. Like she can feel all this shit coming off me. Like this guy already knows he's going to bang me, right? Like this guy like is here to bang me. Like he does this all the time. That's what's being communicated. Okay. And this Indian kid, it just switched. 
So you have to go in, and I, I will make a, a separate video on inner game, but the strongest inner game mindsets are to think you're the shit, think that you're awesome, think that you can get any girl in the club, and then you're gonna actually sub-communicate all that and the girls are gonna respond positively to it. And then you're gonna have empirical data to look at and say, look, I actually am the man. I'm fucking all these hot chicks, right? And the, the quantity of the number of girls you bang will go up as a result. And the quality, your average quality of how hot the girls are will go up as well over time. All right, so moving on. I was living in Puerto Rico the past year. <laughs> like I was living in Puerto Rico this past year. I was living in the past year. Okay, now she says, do you have a cigarette? To me, this is like music to my ears because if you watch my night game video, I talk about how you need to isolate, right? Because she has friends. I usually isolate to the bar, but it's more preferable to isolate to the smoking section because why? It's closer to the cabs, okay? So it's, they call that baby step in the pole. You're getting her like basically closer to like your final goal, which is taking her home, which requires getting a cab. So she is like a smoker. So she's suggesting we go out and have cigarettes. Now I don't carry cigarettes around. So you'll see them in a minute here. I instruct my cameraman to like try to find a cigarette and all this shit. I end up like buying one from a guy out in the smoking section. But now my isolation is solved, assuming I can find a cigarette because she doesn't have any. But now we're gonna be moving out to the smoking section. And in my mind, I'm like, awesome. I'm gonna convince her outside there to pull, answer her objections, but we're gonna get in the cab, okay? And also you're gonna see coming up in a second, um, she gives me like the traditional like doggy dinner bowl look. If you, for those of you that read the, the book, The Game, they talk about it, like when a dog's like about to eat and it's like salivating, it has like these puppy eyes. Um, also there's a term, I think RSD's term, anime eyes. Basically it's just like the girl's like telegraphing, like looking at you like, like she wants to kiss you, right? And see how I'm like holding her on one side with my hand I have an arm around her back. I'm kind of like in her personal space, and, and she gives me this look, so I just start kissing her. Okay. I do, yeah. Let's go I go, can I kiss you? I was already way up in her personal space at that point. Our face was like this far apart. <coughs> Fucking sneezing. Ugh. Sorry. Okay. Now, I talk about my night game video. I would normally go for like a long makeout. Okay. And then start talking dirty, start talking about how we're gonna fuck, all this shit. But in this particular situation, um, that would actually go against my agenda because we already have agreed to go out to the smoking section, which is near the cab. So if we're like standing inside, like making out all this time, it's a better move to, to direct things more towards the cab in this situation. Okay? That's so what you see here. We don't go for like a long makeout. <laughs> Puerto Ricans are my favorite now. I'm like Puerto Ricans are my favorite. That's like a <laughs> my face here. That's like a funny or not funny, like a, like a fun qualification thing. I don't again I don't do qualification, but Latinas are my favorite. Not necessarily Puerto Ricans, but I do like Latinas, but I'm just kind of like making her feel special and unique here, like, oh Puerto Ricans are my favorite, okay? You like Nicky Jam? <laughs> now I'm like trying to relate to her, like, do you like Nicky Jam, which is like one of the famous reggaeton dudes in uh, Puerto Rico. Peter! No! No! Hold on, why am I trying to do it fast? Look at this titties, look at this titties, look at this titties. Hey, Julie! Come on, come on, come on, come on, come All right, so here's what I'm telling my cameraman. We need a cigarette right now. Ask a bunch of people for a cigarette. Buy one if you have to. So normally my cameraman just follows me right outside when I isolate or when I'm pulling. Um, when I've had like six different cameramen over the years, but, but you know, they're usually pretty good about st like sticking on me. Um, in this particular case, you can't hear him because the, the mic is on me. Like the, oh, I talked about my last video too. Okay, here's my setup for the, for the infield filming. I'm using a GoPro Hero 4. Um, with modified lens for night vision, and then it has like an IR array, infrared, not visible to the human eye, but it kind of illuminates things for the camera. And then I'm using like a Sennheiser, like high-end lavalier mic that goes underneath the inside of my collared shirt. And the chick is like usually shorter than me, and she, well, almost always shorter than me, and she's talking like almost directly into it because I'm taller. And then it's a cardioid pattern 
which means that it captures like the space immediately in front of you pretty clearly, and then it cuts out background noise. It cuts it cuts it down, so it helps cut through the club music. That's perfect for infield filming. You can't hear the cameraman. Basically, all he's doing here is asking for a cigarette for multiple people and trying to buy one, and most people don't have one. And then he comes and joins me outside. That's like 100 people. I don't care. That's like everyone. Oh my god. When you um, demonstration of heart value is basically like when I say DJ, it, it, it implies a whole bunch of stuff. I know a lot of people. I have an adventurous life. My life's more fun than hers. I have access to a lot of women, etc., etc. Okay. Wait, Jason, wait one sec. Come here. Here. Um, I'm telling, uh, I think one of my wings outside, this is the hottest chick here. Hey, that's not a nice thing to say. <laughs> We got, can we grab can we buy a cigarette for you guys? Alright, so now I'm asking, you can't see on that video yet because the cameraman is still asking inside, he's gonna come out and join me soon. I'm asking guys outside if I can buy a cigarette off them. So I buy like two cigarettes off them for like a dollar or two. And again, I just need this because the reason why her and I went outside is to smoke. I normally don't smoke. I'll make a video on how to prevent damage from alcohol and cigarette smoke and stuff like that using supplements. Um, but in this case, this is the reason why we're outside. So that so I'm getting a cigarette, buying one off these guys, so that her and I can socially smoke. And I'm gonna lay down the pole language and then try to pull her. I just stop this. Oh. Can we buy one off you guys? Can I buy one off you, bro? Can I buy one off you? Can I buy a cigarette? How much? Okay, sure. Fuck, bro. There you go. Thank you, Ben. Yeah. All right, there's me buying cigarettes. In the meantime, my formal loyal friend, Chris Parker, happens to be out with me this night. And I will make a whole separate video blasting him in the next couple weeks. He's a fucking asshole. Um, and a loser. But here's the thing. Like a super quick summary. I taught this kid at boot camp in 2012. It was his first foray into game. I was already at like 150. I don't know, I was at like 1.30 or so at that time. And then I, I taught him again in January 2016. And he actually was somewhat of a close friend just because I had known him for like five years and he took two programs. I mean, I answered a lot of game questions for him. And then when I was coming together with the final version of my product um, in 2016, I needed someone to transcribe all the audio module um, teaching courses into text into ebooks and he volunteered to do it and I asked him to sign an NDA he, he told me he would but then he never did he kept making excuses and directly after that he became Chris Parker and started teaching boot camps using my methods and then about a year later I was pissed about that but I was like ah, I'll just keep him as a friend for now and a year later he fucking put out a product that rips off a whole bunch of my shit and it's a way watered down version of my stuff but he literally copy pasted parts out of my book out of my program okay Insane, insanity and I, I will show you guys I'll show you the, the parts of, that he copied and all stuff and he has like 12 total polls in that program I know for a fact he had a monogamous girlfriend at that time so none of his polls closed and I've seen him in field he gets wrecked he's like a little like twerpy looking kid I denounced him as a friend once I saw that he copied a bunch of my product and now he's running around trying to talk trash on me just because I publicly blasted him and all this stuff whatever a whole bunch of drama but you're gonna see him being a great friend and, and escalating on my chick what I said in the, in the last version that just got deleted, you guys need firm lines in the sand with your guy friends, with your wingmen. I usually give my wingmen like one free card, unless it was like really over the top. Like if they fucking go after one of my chicks or they like hit on my fuck buddy or cross the line any of those ways, and then they're done. Like I've, I've dropped a bunch of friends, I've dropped a bunch of wings, and it's really a huge loss for them because I was a great 
resource. I was a, for game. I was a great wingman to them. I've never done that ship once to a friend. Okay, I've, and I've had plenty of opportunities. It's a very important loyalty principle for me. I won't game my friends' girls. I've even had, like, my friend like will have a fuck buddy over or something, and he'll like ask to go or he'll go to pick up food or whatever, and his girl will like try to like give me a blowjob or something. And uh, of course I won't do it. And then I'll like tell my friend, I'll be like, dude, drop this piece of shit, right? It's like fucking bullshit. And, but I have friends that try to do this kind of shit to me. Like they, they, they try to like one up Jay Malt. They're like, oh, like, let me see if I, like you're gonna see Chris Parker try to like earn points on the scorecard here, like against me and shit, which is totally ridiculous. This is my set and he, he's just fucking, you know, putting it in jeopardy. It turns out fine. I won't, I won't go on and on about it. I'm going to put out a video about this kid. He's a fucking loser. And I blurred his face. I don't even know why. This is a waste, waste of my editor's time. But here we go. Because it's not even his fucking real name. It's, he's using an alien. Hello? Okay, here he is. Gaming up my chick. And then he gets physical with her, which is really nice. I didn't even realize this until I watched the infield later. As I'm getting a cigarette for this chick. From this other dude. He's broke. He's dangerous, I know. He's dangerous. Yo, Okay, so it makes sense to me too. Have you ever been to Puerto Rico? Every time they talk to your girl, they get like, uh, like he's like trying to like play it off to my my cameraman. Like he he's somehow in the right here for being physical. There was another situation where he like was was like walking off like to the bathroom with one of my fuck buddies holding her hand and I like fucking shoved him down and he's like, Oh, it's not what you think. I'm like, motherfucker, you're holding the girl's hand. So like, cool, I'm just helping her get to the bat it's like shut the fuck up. Like these guys try to like play totally innocent when they when they pull this shit. Like he almost got cut off at that point. I don't know I don't know why I let him stick around. And then he goes and fucking rips off my product. Yeah, he's gonna get fully blasted. Um all right, moving on. And so like, the correct move for those watching, like he's trying to like gain value points and stuff here for himself. Like he should be rolling off at this point, not not trying to like monkey wrench my shit or like make me look worse. They're always the first of all, I was like two years old. First of all, I want to explain something to you. All right, now listen to what I say here. This is like a pretty important point. When I walked in this bar, I'm just, I'm just gonna, gonna be straight up. up. I, I saw, saw your nipples hard in that shirt, shirt. <laughs> and I was like, I'm in love, that's it. All right, so now I just said something very over the top. I said when I walked in this bar, I saw your nipples hard, <laughs> and I said, and I thought I was in love. Now this is over the top, but I'm saying it in a funny way, and I'm owning it, right? And I'm I'm speaking sexually about her body, and it's it's coming from like a manly place, not a fucking weird or creepy place. I'm getting married, guys. It's nice knowing you. I'm not single anymore. She told me she likes my teeth. And I was like, he retorts or tries to get involved in this fun by saying she told me she likes my teeth. Keep moving. Like, you do have very nice teeth. Yeah, I think she's like. <laughs> well, listen, yo. All right, now, now it's like now it's to the point where like I need to like shut it down because like he's, like do you see do you see this kind of bullshit like, here I've I've already kissed this girl I've isolated her outside I need to be like running like pulling logistics now and being one on one with her making out more we don't need the, don't do this kind of shit to your friends this kid's a fucking asshole in the first place it's not like I was ever at risk of losing like this kid if you see this kid in real life I'm gonna show pictures like five six. The guy like tower over him, like he looks like a little child next to me. He's like he looks like torpy and shit, but he's just trying to like say some fancy stuff and and whatever. It's completely unnecessary for him to be around at this point, and it's just detracting. I'm I'm gonna pull her in about six minutes from now, anyways. But still, it's totally unnecessary for him to be in there. I saw I saw the fucking nipples, and I was just like, that is really nice, and I want to suck on them. All right, so now I'm <laughs> now I'm like those nipples were really nice. I saw them and I wanted to suck on them. Okay, just watching my my battery here, my computer. It's like fifteen percent. Okay, so listen to how she reacts about this. Oh I'm, my I'm, god! Can we lick him through your shirt? What the fuck is wrong with you? All right, she's saying it in a funny way though. Like she's not like weirded out or creeped out. I'm just openly being like, damn, you have like fucking nice ass nipples. I want to suck on them. But I'm like saying it unapologetically. It's coming from manly place. Like basically implying like I'm going to suck on them, I'm going to bang you. <laughs> See, she's laughing. <laughs> Who are you here with? No, she's not wearing a fucking bra. Chris Parker's like, are you wearing a bra? Like very clearly not. You can see her entire fucking tits with the nipples there. Now I'm like, who are you here with? 
logistical question to find out if I have to deal with cock blocks. Here with my friend and I, I met a bunch of fives at the bar. I'm not, I'm just, you said I you met a bunch, bunch of fives? Of no, I met a bunch of She said she met a bunch of guys at the bar. I'm joking because it sounded like she said she met a bunch of fives. Yeah, I know. Everyone's ugly in there. I met a bunch of fives because I couldn't find my friend and they were just like, oh, forget about him. Okay, let me explain this with you. Literally, the, uh, the past year of my life, I spent in Puerto Rico. I just went back. All right, finally, fucking loser rolls off last, last week. Because I need like there's basically, he's basically. I just had to like kind of like stall a little bit because I can't like fucking work all the the shit with him actively gaming around the side. It's unnecessary and retarded in the first place. I was living in uh, San Juan, right? You know, San Juan. All right, so she's looking off to the side, so I tap her to like re regain some attention. I told her I was living in San Juan. I'm like kind of like trying to build rapport here because she's from Puerto Rico. No way. What part? San Juan. No, no, she's from San Juan. I, I was living in Puerto Rico last year because I have four percent flat tax, and my non-pickup business, my affiliate marketing stuff, you lose like fifty percent in the high brackets in New York, California, and Puerto Rico, it's four percent flat if you establish your LLC there and you're a resident there. But I was almost killed like multiple times just from random gun violence at bars and stuff like that. So I got the fuck out of there. It's, it's kind of like a war zone over there. It's not worth the tax savings. But now Trump has the 21% rolling out for corporations. All right, so. But like, <laughs> so now I'm like asking a question about where, she moved away from there when she was like a little kid or something, so she doesn't know shit about Puerto Rico. <laughs> so now I'm like teasing her for not knowing about Puerto Rico, physically escalating. So here's the next I said, do you like Spanish girls? I'm like, yeah, so now it's like really on. This is like, the, this is what it means to be on, right? Like for those of you that are like, how do I know if she likes me? Like, how do I know if it's like on? Okay, first of all, I already kissed her, but it, all my sub communicate, like it's so powerful to just assume you're taking her home. Okay, because then everything you do and say comes from that place and the girl buys into it as well. I'm gonna have to plug this battery in soon. This computer. Well, I mean, that's all I had up for the past year. But I like sorry. And I'm like, yeah, that's all I had was Latinas the past year because I was living in fucking Puerto Rico. Even yeah, I'm like, that girl looks yeah, like the kind right. of girl I've never been even saw that. What do you think of me? <laughs> now I'm like, I can tell this girl's Puerto Rican. Now I'm like, what do you think of me? Ha ha ha. Because I was like, I recognize you as Puerto Rican. I'm a tall, I'm a six foot four woman. How tall are you? You know how much I destroyed in Puerto Rico with the ladies? <laughs> now I'm like, <laughs> a lot of this stuff, what you guys would think is like, like big no no's or whatever. Like I'm telling her to her face, I destroyed in Puerto Rico with the ladies because I'm so tall and I have blue eyes, and I'm just I'm just telling her about this. But you have to you have to realize like everything is about frame and about sub communication. It's all coming from like an I don't give a fuck place. Like for those of you who watch my five hour tactical breakdown, I talk about how I banged a chick. I'm just gonna plug this in. Um, give me literally like 15 seconds here. Sorry, I don't want it to fucking die right in the middle here. Sorry about that. I'm just gonna plug this fucking shit in here. Alright. So, I will edit that out at some point. You can like crop pieces out in YouTube, and I'm gonna probably upload it with that little 15 second thing uh, as part of it. Let's let this refocus. There we go. Alright, I will edit that out after it's been uploaded because I'm gonna get this uploaded while this chick is here. Potential 777. Alright, so what did I say to her? I crushed it with the ladies. In Puerto Rico, because I was tall. <laughs> they all like, they all come and they say, "You speak Spanish?" <laughs> I speak Spanish. Not really. Hi okay, so I speak fluent Spanish now because I lived in Puerto Rico. I taught myself. I will actually make a video on how you can learn a language fluently in like a couple days. No joke. I found this German guy who has patents on the method. I did it for Spanish. I did it for Russian. He has it for all kinds of languages. You can literally learn it in like a couple days. Sounds ridiculous. I'll make a video about that. So I learned fluent Spanish. I want you guys to see how she how she reacted to me. Let me show you again. 
Pablo Espanol. I'm a tall, I'm a six foot four woman. How tall are you? You know how much I destroyed in Puerto Rico with the ladies? Do you know how much you destroyed in Puerto Rico with the ladies? <laughs> They're all like, ha 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 ha. They all come up and they say, do you speak Spanish? <laughs> I sp and she's like loving it because it's coming from a, an alpha place, okay? But like I said, the touch of the game breakdown, I'm, I'm like openly like fucking a girl from another girl and then I fucked the other one and then I fucked the other one again. Because I'm owning all this stuff. And it, it's like very powerful to be like talking about other girls liking you and shit when you're with, when you're with a chick, okay? Just making sure this chick's not here yet. Okay. Speak Spanish. I learned. Hablo Espanol. Soy muy guapo y muy inteligente. Y tengo. So now I'm telling her, like, she knows some basic Spanish, so I just said, Soy muy guapo y muy inteligente. That means I'm very handsome and very smart. It's, it's meant to be like a funny joke, right? Because I'm openly just bragging. And then I say, Tengo un pene grande, which means, and I have a big dick. And that's like the big, like, aha. I, I used to say this all the time in Puerto Rico, and they'd like laugh so much. Sí. Yeah, I was, I was talking to this. So I just told her I have a big dick in Spanish, and she goes, okay. I was talking to, yeah, but, guys. I was to, hold on, hold on. I was to, now fucking Chris Parker is trying to get her attention. Like, this is, I still pull the chick in like 10 minutes, start to finish, but it's like totally unnecessary for him to be like fucking wild carding shit in there. Like, or not wild card, like, like detracting, and like physically escalating on the girl. Like, I'm gonna blast shit out of this kid for ma many other reasons besides this kind of shit, but here you, here you get to see firsthand what a piece of shit this kid is. Now he's tapping her on the side, like, I'm like talking dirty to this chick, and notice how I'm not just like talking about like garbage stuff that goes nowhere, and I'm, and I'm not like keeping a whole bunch of distance. Sexual things, pre selection things, talking about other girls liking me, um, telling her her fucking tits are awesome, that I wanna suck on them. Time, you know, all unapologetic in this, and we got Chris Parker trying to like, like a fucking female cock block. He's basically like being like a fat friend, like one of her fat friends, like tapping on the side, like trying to get her to talk to him. Tell us, tell us, tell us. I was gonna say, like, I, I hope you have a wonderful night. Again, look, look at right here. Like, I'm not gonna keep going. I'm not, I'm not threatened by this, and he never had a chance with this chick. But this is communicating, like, I do not respect, like, I have acknowledged that I know this kid. It's making me look like, it's like tooling me, okay? And I still have lots of value with the chick, and I still make the moves and make things happen. He has his arm around her right here, completely out of control, right? If he wasn't my friend, the correct move is I would come in, I would get in between him and her, and I'd be like, listen, this is my chick, get the fuck out of here, right? I've only been in like two fights in the past three years. One of them, I know how to fight really well. One of them I just posted about on my YouTube. It almost never will escalate into a fight. But I will tell the guy very clearly, like, and so will Sonny. Like, get the fuck out of here, okay? And I will like not let him into the space. In, th in this situation, I'm not, I'm not gonna like go fucking box this little fucking twerp out. Oh my God, like never ends with these girls. Hey, I'm just finishing up a business call. Can I can I just call you back in like five minutes? Are you here? How far away are you? Okay, just let me finish this. Just let me finish this call and then I'll, then I'll come get you. Alright, alright, bye. Yes, sorry, it's like really fucking rude. She's here waiting. It's fine. I'm gonna take my time here. She's gonna be this. You will see her on the Instagram. Assuming it closes, probably will. All right, so let's see. Let's see our friend here being rude. You seem very jealous. I'm not going. He's chilling right here. I wish you a good night. Escalate, and she's like, "Where are you going?" Right? Because he he's trying to fucking game her on the side. Pissing me off. This kid deserves a nice fucking punch in the throat. All right, here we go. I'm I'm standing right here. <laughs> I'm looking at I'm looking at my cameraman. Like, are you fucking kidding? This is, this is the kind of shit. Like I literally, I've cut off a whole bunch of friends and a whole bunch of wings over this kind of shit. This should never happen. I don't want this to be like the focus of the video here, but this should never happen. Like right now he's, he's like, his physicality and this kind of shit is like, especially right in my face, like right directly while I'm standing there is like totally, totally, totally ridiculous and out of control. Okay, so he, he's like presenting problems for me at this point. Serious. So listen. Oh, sorry. Fucking homeless guy. What the fuck does that say? 
I'm like, so listen. Right. We're, listening. We're, listening. We're, listening. We're listening. I'm sorry, baby. I don't have. I don't have. I don't have. Can I get it? Can I get it? This is my best friend, actually. This is my best friend. You still won't fucking roll off. We've been best friends since childhood. We've been best friends for a long time. Take good care of him. Trust me. Take good care of him. Trust me. It's like, it's like straight out of RSD. It's like corny and cringe. So listen. Yeah. So when I was. Okay, regaining her attention. Out there, right? I was DJing. I was DJing at um, Rob John. Do you know what's happening? I'm like, I can't tell me. Fucking editor. I told him just make it like a lapse in the sound, but it's like the sound they use when people are swearing on TV. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> Wait. Okay. Here's what would be the perfect night. Okay. I lean in, she starts fucking going after me kissing. Oh, I say this is what this is this was this is what would be the perfect night. So so sometimes I would do this when I'm like starting to set up the pull. When I preface my like pull talk with this is what's gonna happen. Okay, here's what's gonna happen. It's like setting a frame. Okay, and they're gonna just gonna fall right into it. Watch how I do it. It's really really really, really powerful. So I said this is what's here's what's gonna happen. And I didn't say it in this case, but a lot of times I'll say here's what's gonna happen. And everything after that is like the frame, and it's like, okay, you're like you're gonna be part of that now. Here I said, this is what would be a perfect night, okay. And then I lean in to tell her, and she kisses my cheek, so I start making out with her a little more. Now here's, listen to my language here. What I want to do with you? <laughs> what I want to do with you? I mean, I got like, I don't. <laughs> I didn't hear what, you hear what I said. I think I said something sexual. I live like super close to here. Okay, I live super, I'm just repeating in case you guys can't hear the audio. I live super close to here. And that's, that wasn't even true. I lived like 20 minutes by cab. Okay, this is in Manhattan. Um, I was about 20 minutes away by cab. All right, but once you're in the cab, you just banter. And as long as you're not like 35 minutes or more, you're, you're usually totally fine. In the cab, you have to banter and banter and banter. Because what happens is like, here's her like state or like the vibe or whatever. And as you like let the conversation die down, um, there's like a threshold where her objections are, the objections you were getting in the club. And like, once you like let the conversation call flat, fall flat or it starts getting to awkward territory or whatever, it's going to go below this threshold and she's going to rebring those objections up again. And you're going to risk like the set blowing out in the cab. So what I found is that that starts to happen usually around eight to 12 minutes is when like she starts really pushing the objection stuff. And usually you just address it cut thread, change topic. So you'll be like, it's cool. Like we'll be there in like five minutes. Like there's been much traffic. Anyways, tell me more about this. And you can literally just spew words. It doesn't really matter. Like I've had students on boot camps plenty of times, like say the dumbest shit. Like they're, they're bantering like on the way to the cab, like in Vegas, there's like cab lines and they're like in the cab line. And the next day I'm like, what did you say in the fucking cab line? You had to wait like a half hour, right? He's like, yeah, I was talking about sharks and stuff. I'm like, okay. <laughs> like I don't usually talk about like super random shit like that. I'm, I'm mostly just flirting and stuff, but you have to like keep your mouth going. Like imagine, contrast like having fun and laughing in, on the way to the cab and in the cab versus just like sitting next to each other. Like that's not, that's not like what a cool guy would do. It's, it's, it, things just get fucking awkward and, <laughs> and weird and she starts doubting things. Okay, so I say I live close by. And I have tequila, vodka, and vodka. I said I have tequila, vodka, I'm listing out the kinds of liquor that I have. What's your favorite liquor? What's your favorite kind of liquor? Can we go rip tequila shots? And she says tequila. I say let's go rip tequila shots. And I, I just talked about um, in this video, when I taught you guys how to pull in the first half of the night, I talk about how my go-to move for the first half of the night pull is to go rip shots and come right back. Okay, and you're lowering compliance thresholds by saying I live close, we're only going for a half hour. Um, we're gonna come back. All this shit. Okay, I ended up banging this chick all night. She slept over. We didn't come. We didn't come back, and you almost never will. Um, but if you do come back, you have an opportunity to pull again. Come back. Oh my God. I'm like, okay. So what, what did I do? I said, here would be a perfect night. I live close by, which help, makes it easier for her. I said, I have these kinds of liquor. What's your favorite kind? She says, tequila. I said, cool, let's go rip tequila shots and we'll come back. Okay, I said, let's do it. You live close by here? Okay, now she's verifying you live close by here. That's always important to them. 
And it makes things a lot easier. Like, oh, we're just gonna hop right over and come right back. It's just a really easy thing. How close? How close? Four three blocks. Yeah. Yeah. I say three blocks. Okay, she's looking at her watch. I don't remember exactly what time of night this was. It was before midnight, though. I'm pretty sure. She might say, let me see here. We'll be back in 30 minutes. Okay, so I see her looking at the watch, so I address the time objection before it even comes up. We'll be back in 30 minutes, okay? So we're going three blocks away for tequila shots, which are her favorites, and you should have at your bar, in, or just on your counter, um, rum, tequila, whiskey, vodka, gin. Those are like the main ones. And mixers, like fucking soda water, tonic water, cranberry juice, orange juice in your fridge. Because different girls like different drinks. Um, okay, so what have I said? I live three blocks away. I said I live close, and she's like, how close is it? Three blocks. Um, I said, which kind of liquor do you like? She likes tequila, cool, I have it. Um, and then I see her looking at her watch. We're gonna be back in 30 minutes. I gotta come back because my friends are here. I have to come back because my friends are here. What did I just do? I just took her main objection, because what is, always, what is always the main objection I talked about in my my uh, breakdown of what you do to pull in the first half of the night? The main objection is always to me, I can't leave my friends. So I see her look at the watch. She's concerned about being able to get back, and she's also concerned about being able to return to her friends. And I've done this so many fucking times now, guys. Like, I'm, I'm coming up on 800 here, and it's just automatic now. And so you see, I'm one step ahead. I tell her, don't worry, we have to come back. What do I say? I said, like, we have to come back because my friends are here, or something like that. So I'm using her objection against her before she even says it preemptively. You live close right here? Yeah. See, watch. We'll be back in 30 minutes. We'll be back in 30 minutes, automatic. See. I gotta come back because my friends are here. I gotta come back because my friends are here. I preempted it. <laughs> She's like, she knows it's like gonna go down. I'm just serious. I say, I'm serious. Let's go. Now I'm leading. Let me finish this. Come on, let's get right here. Uh, normally, normally you're gonna get objections. I have in my product, I have the 14 main objections. Um, I can't remember them all right now. Let me just try to rattle them off. I can't leave my friends. I need to stay till the end for some reason. Like, see the headliner DJ. I have to be up early in the morning, which you'll get on the weekdays a lot. How do I know you're not a murderer or rapist or like some kind of like extreme thing? It's like a safety objection. Um, how will I get back? How will I get home in the morning? Um, you just want to have sex with me. Um, I can't go unless one of my friends comes. Um, if you're pulling the first half of the night, sometimes you get, but we just got here. You know, then there's various ways to handle all these. Um, her only objections, which she didn't really even explicitly state too much because I preempted them, were like, you live close, right? And I'm just going to send a text to this girl almost done so she doesn't leave. You live close, right? I say yes. And then, uh, uh, she says no rush. They're so, like, subservient. She's, like, sitting in her car. It's an 18-year-old Latina. About to fucking be put on Instagram. I'll probably blur her face. It's out of respect. <laughs> um, she's just sitting in her car. She's like, no rush. Because I'm on a business meeting. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I preempted like, yeah, I live close, and then I saw her look at the watch, and she was probably gonna say, oh, well, I, you know, I can't be going along, I can't leave my friends, and I preempted both of those because I know they come like almost every time. So I said we're only gonna go for thirty minutes. We're back in thirty minutes. I have to come back because my friends are here. Okay. Yeah. 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 We'll come back. Now, now we have an, now we have an objection. I have to get my jacket. Now, for those of you that aren't advanced or that haven't pulled very much, them having to return into the club when you're ready. <laughs> There's a hard nipple there. You see him better. I'll, I'll, you're gonna see the video where she's coming up my stairs in my building and, and it's, it's yeah make sure if you guys are still watching this point which you should be make sure you stick around to the end because I'm gonna show her on rotation and stuff like that with some other clips um, this was like a really good fuck buddy I had three songs with this chick she was by we got like super close and then I had I had to move and it, was, it sucked but um, okay so for the, what I was gonna say is for those of you that are advanced or have pulled a bunch you know that going to get the jacket is like walking through a minefield I remember even in 2012, I was like teaching a boot camp with Todd. We were in after hours in Washington D.C., and I was making out this chick, and we were like by the exit, we we're leaving, and she's like, and she had like five friends in the club. Like I had to disarm all these fucking cop blocks and shit. She's like, I have to get my jacket, and like the coat check was like in the other corner of the club. 
And I was like, uh, we'll just get it tomorrow. And she's like, no, 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 I need, I need it. It's like my favorite jacket. I'm like, we'll get it tomorrow. I'll, I'll take you personally or I'll, I'll get it for you or whatever. She insisted. And like, I had put in all this work into the set and into the interaction. She insisted. So here we are like holding hands, walking through the club and like, I'm just waiting. It's, like, it's literally like a minefield. I'm just waiting for like one of the five friends to see us and fucking cocklock the whole thing. It, it, thankfully it didn't happen. That, that chick though, that was, I didn't get to close. We got back to my hotel and she like literally went to like wash her hands in the bathroom and she's like, get a condom, all this stuff. And I fucking passed out. And then in the morning when we woke up, she was like late for work and she had to like run out. And that was like the Sunday of like the boot camp, and I had to go back to Philadelphia. Like I said, there's like tons of situations where I like should have closed but didn't. So I, I, I should be over like a thousand. Like I pass up on opportunities, there's stuff like that that happens where all the work is done and it was and they they want to fuck and it just doesn't go down. I fell asleep. All kinds of shit like that. Or they have principles or whatever and they won't fuck on the first time and that was your only shot. So enough about that. So I'm like, fuck, because she needs the jacket. Now listen here. Or you don't, you don't. No, I have to get my jacket. My I go, you can just wear mine. We'll get yours later. She goes, no, I have to get the jacket. But we're coming back 100%. But we're coming back 100%. You can get the jacket then. Again, I'm just giving her different alternatives to us having to go in and get the jacket because I know her friends could cock block. Okay, where is it? <laughs> She's insisting. So I'm like, where is it? Hold on. Where's your jacket? I'll get him so you just... Chris Parker coming to the rescue. Where's your jacket? I'll get it. Smoke your cigarette. Yeah, yeah. We'll just you don't know my friend. I'm like, we'll just sit, smoke the cigarette. Because what's, what's going to happen? If we run into the friends, I'm going to have to deal with that whole mess. Oh, you're going to this random stranger's house? No, why don't you stay with us? Why don't you guys do a tequila shot at the bar right here where, where, you know, where we can supervise? All this kind of shit. I mean, it happens all the time. Um, so I don't want to fucking go back in with her because it presents more problems. And Chris Parker offers to get the jacket after fucking escalating iron shit. And she says, no, you don't know my friend. And he's in there. Text him to bring it out. Or text he, Chris Parker says, text him to bring the coat out. Text him that I'm coming to get it. Where is it? <laughs> he will, he wants even if we're back in 30 minutes, you still need the jacket? I'm like, even if we're back in 30 minutes, you still need the jacket? Dude, take my, stop being a baby. No, I'm serious. Will you wait out here for me? All right, so now it's presenting a real problem. It works out okay, but it's presenting a real problem. I'm like, just take mine. We'll get yours in 30 minutes. And she's like, no, will you wait out here for me? Now, you never want to, like, send her off on her own because you are, like, the objection handler for her and for her friends. So what's going to happen if I, if I stand out here and wait for her is she rolls up on, on the friends inside, and the friends are going to be like, uh, it's like, like when I was doing the door-to-door -door sales, I'm gonna make a video about this when I, I talk about other videos, how I was the number one salesman for door-to-door -door sales with no prior sales experience, just because it's all the same shit as game, answering objections, building rapport, frame control, persuasion, all the, it's all the same shit. And I was able to be the number one salesman even by taking a three-hour break in the middle of the day to go fuck a chick. Um, I was the number one salesman on, on Memorial Day, and I didn't say in the other video, but there was like 3,000 salesmen working for the company. And I like legit was the number one, I have a screenshot of it. I'll make a video about that. But the analogy there is, like when you're trying to sell something to like a, a cold knocked door, like a homeowner, if their spouse is not around, you don't wanna like hard pitch the spouse. Like in this situation, let's, let's call her friends the spouse. She's sold on buying, aka coming home with me. If I send her off to like give the pitch to the friend, aka the spouse, like the, the odds of that working are like extremely low. Like say I pitched a dude and he's like, or it's usually you pitch the wife because the husband's working. So like say I pitched a, a woman and like she ate it all up and she's like, I want this 100%. My husband is like the decision maker with, with buying stuff or, or I need his, his buy-in on this. Um, I'll talk it over with him and we'll get back to you. I talked to all the top sales guys that have been doing it for years. It like almost never closes that way. Because we, like, we were selling like $5,000 like smart home and, and alarm systems. Like no one's going to. He's not gonna be like, oh yeah, sounds good. And like, you know, he's gonna have a bunch of objections and the wife's gonna be like, uh, I don't know how to answer it. And he's gonna be like, no, fuck no, we're not doing this, right? So, same analogy here. That's why I'm bringing, bringing this into the picture. Um, this chick is gonna go in with her friends and the friends are like, where are you going? Oh, to some guy's house to drink tequila. Uh, no, you're not, you're staying with us, all right? So long story short, you wanna go with them if, if you have to go through this minefield shit to get the jacket. Or they might insist on telling their friends they have to go. You don't want to like send them in and hope it works out for the better, okay? Because it's not going to happen.
Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm saying I'll come along with you. Okay. Right. I'll come with you. Here. here. No, stay right here. here. She's like, no, stay here. I know better. It's not going to fucking work. It's like the spouse being like, I'll just explain it to them. No, no, no. I'll come back when you're both here. When's a good time? Okay. No, I want to come with you because I don't want to order one more beer when we're walking. I'm like, I make up some bullshit. I want to order one more beer while, we're, while I'm waiting. Total bullshit. Here. Here. I'm going to walk with you. She says, stay here. I said, I'm going to walk with you. Like, she goes off on her own, but I know better. Like, I have to go on to bail and subjections or I'm going to lose. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, I, I considered briefly like just waiting, but I, I know it from experience it's not going to go down. Or it's a, your odds go way down if you let them go solo. So tell the camera and follow me. <laughs> <laughs> Stay here. I'm gonna get a drink. I'm getting a drink. Okay, I'm, I'm right behind you. I'm getting, I'm getting a drink. Where are you? Where's your, where's your people? Like where's your where's your people? Where's your car? Go around, go around my back. Get up here. No, no. I gotta get my jacket. Let's get it. Let's get it. My jacket's over here. I said let's get it. And in my mind, I, <laughs> I've been fucked by this so many times. I'm, I like know. Um. Um, shit. Okay. Holy for sure. Stay on us, stay on us. Oh, what I was saying is like, I've, been, I've been fucked with this so many times. Like, in my mind, I'm like, fuck. So you, you run, like, the, a sprint to the finish line, and then, like, the finish line, someone, like, fucking decks you in the face or kicks you in the nuts or fucking shoots you in the arm and you fall to the ground. <laughs> this is, like, a nice for me. So I just told the camera, man, this is, a nine, this is like a nine for me. I just want to go out whenever I fucking watch my field to fucking club music. Hey, give me, give me updates. I don't, I don't want to blow myself out by the, by the guys here protective. Okay, um, so she's with like a few guy friends or whatever. And I say to my cameraman, give me updates. Like, I chose not to, like, roll in and, like, I'm, I'm only going to, like, roll in if, if, like, there's objections that need to be answered. But I see she's with, like, multiple guys and stuff. And I said, I don't want the guys getting all protective if I go in. So in this particular situation, since it's guys, I didn't want to, like, have them trying to, like, all of a sudden be, like, protective and shit if I roll in. So I'm, like, only going to address the friends in the group if they become a problem so I'm, I'm just telling my cameraman give me updates i have my back to her and her friends and i'm he's gonna tell me like oh they're um trying to get her to say it. like he's just trying to judge from like the, the situation the body language if i need to go in and like deal with them yeah, yeah. give me updates on what's happening my cameraman's like she just got her jacket <laughs> She's right behind you. All right, so like a lot of times you're gonna have to fucking deal with those friends, okay? And a lot of times you're gonna get more objections out on the the um, isolation area as well. There's like 14 main ones, and I know exactly what to do in each situation, and I know how to deal with the friends. You know, that, that would have made the breakdown way, way longer if I had to do all that shit. Just keep in mind those those are part of the equation. <laughs> Keep in mind, you've got people like Frank Hare with his pickup decoded showing how to like out alpha beta guys and be like the alpha wolf and stuff. And his infield consists of like creepily standing next to a guy and a girl talking to each other, the dude sitting on, on a girl, and then like tapping her shoulder and she looks at them, looks at him like he's a fucking weirdo. And then he's like explaining that's how you be alpha. And like, I think he even says that maybe the chick is is looking for a threesome that night and maybe him and the dude can partner up it's like really cringe really out of control and it's supposed to be this big accomplishment that he like tapped the girl on the shoulder and they both thought he was weird so i hope <laughs> my infield is a little bit more helpful here. You okay? 
I should have nice ass too. I think he just got a good shot of it. <laughs> Random blurs here. I'm gonna talk to that. Everybody. It was my birthday, was my birthday yesterday. yesterday. I feel I feel All right, now I'm just amping. <laughs> This, it actually wasn't my birthday the day before. I'm just like kind of amping the vibe. I just said it was my birthday yesterday. I don't even know why I said that, but it, I'm just kind of like amping the fun right now. I think I'm like carrying over. Happy birthday! Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, these, wait, wait, wait for these girls to get out. Okay, so we're getting a cab. Um, if Okay, one little thing to add in here. Actually, I added two really little quick things. She's still fucking sitting outside. Okay, there wasn't like a bouncer that was trying to cock block, but a lot of times when you're pulling, a bouncer was, is going to tell you like, no re-entry, no re-entry. And if you're doing a first half night pull, part of the thing is you're promising to bring them back, which you can bring them back. Like if she wanted to come back, we would have came back. It's not like you're lying your ass off. Um, but if there is no re-entry at that club and you've told her, the way to deal with it is you tell, you tell them in advance, like they're going to tell you no re-entry when we go to leave. Because it's in their best interest that you stay and keep buying drinks, right? So you're, you just tell her preemptively. This is like having intel on what kind of venue you're at. You just say to the to, her, to the chick, you're like, they're gonna tell you you can't come back in, but I know the owner, I know the bouncer, or whatever, and like they'll just cut us to the front of the line and we'll, we'll get back in. And worst case scenario, like, cause usually you're just gonna bang her and you're gonna stay at your house. Worst case scenario, and you should have connections at the club where you can. I usually almost always could skip the line and they would let me straight back in because I made connections. I'll make a video on befriending the bouncers and the club owner and the bartenders and all that stuff. Because I do that in every city, and it, it pays off in dividends. Um, I even brought at like the high, highest end club in Philly it's after hours, where they're super strict on the door. I brought like ten dudes through, like including the whole boot camp with Tyler and Todd and the assistants and shit. There was like ten of us, and we got cut to the front of the line and like got the cover cut in half or whatever. And my connect was like, "Dude, you're pushing it now." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." These they're just visiting from out of town, and it was like all chodes too, including Todd. Or sorry, Tyler. Todd's actually not that much with Chode at times. Um, <laughs> Alright. Well anyways, that's how you that's how you do it. Oh, the worst case scenario, if you don't have that connect, you'll just have to pay cover again for you and the girl. If, that, if, if that's too expensive for you and it, it hurts your morality to lie about that, and if you get back to the club and you don't want to pay and you guys are stuck outside and you promise you to get back in, then don't pull the girl in the first place. Okay, so you're either gonna have to know someone to get back in. Or you're gonna have to front the cover again, which will be like ten bucks or something. If you don't have a spare ten dollars, stop being a fucking loser. Um, the other thing <clears throat> you might have to deal with, um, which so that's the the bouncer, the bouncer part. Um, let me think here. Let me just put this. Down. Okay, so there's girls getting out of the cab, and then we get in. You're fully Puerto Rican. I fucking knew it. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just bantering here, <clears throat> bantering here to keep the vibe. I saw that girl. I was like, my friend is looking at me. Let's go, get in there. She still had friends looking at me. The the dude, it's probably like friend zone. I'm like, alright, let's get. Into the game. Are you going? Go towards uh, uh, Midtown. Oh, the other thing too, there's something called like a micro objection. So like, when you get to the exit, like a lot of times they're like mentally committing to going with you. And it's like a big like compliance, well not big, but it's it's like a compliance hump. So they might start giving the same objections they gave you in the club. You just answer them again, and it's going to be like easier to answer them because you've already answered them before. You're just going to read it. Don't worry, we're just going a few blocks away just for 30 minutes. we got to come right back. Don't worry. Oh, but you're just going to try to hook up. Oh, no, it's not, not a sexual request, no sexual expectations. Let's just, you know, take things as they come. It'll be, it'll be fun. Don't worry. That's it. Okay. But I'll tell him that I'm gonna, I'm gonna give him the exact address. I said towards my town, just so he can start moving. And now we don't have any footage from the cab, but I was making out with her. I started fucking playing her tits, sucking her tits. She was, you know, it was, it's pretty on. So we fucked like right away as soon as we got home. You said your friends get upset. And you should be escalating the cab if you didn't already know that. Where do you live? Is that nearby? Do you wanna go there? Oh, she says she lives nearby. I'm like, do you want to go there? Because it's like a shorter cab ride. She's like, no. We can't go there? Can go there? Oh, she doesn't live there. Can we go there? Can we go there? No. Why not? Why can't we go there? <laughs> Alright, well, that's pretty much it. So, um, I'm going to cut next to the, the part where I have... Because the cameraman stayed behind. Sometimes he gets to the cab, but he stayed behind. I'm going to cut to the part where we got back to my apartment building. And you see her coming up the stairs. And you get a much better shot of her hard nipples and she starts kissing me and shit. So I hope this was helpful guys. Um, this is the first full length 
video I'm putting out on YouTube, full length poll from start to finish. Okay, I hope that breakdown was helpful. Ask any more questions you have in the description. And I will see you guys in the next video. This is like one of my favorite videos that I've put out so far, by the way. I hope you guys really enjoy it. There's a bunch of uh, <laughs> self-made production and shit throughout. So make sure you watch the rest. The rest, there isn't too much left. Make sure you watch the rest where I, again, cover these, these nice coaches saying this bullshit. And I talk, I show this girl in like the fuck buddy situations. Okay. And I wish I could show you guys like her being part of the threesomes and shit, but it's only so much thought on YouTube. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Hope this was helpful. Hmm? Let me take a picture of you being all Puerto Rican, ready? <laughs> like, like, turn towards me. I want to show my face. Alright, your tits are kind of showing. That's like the best shirt I've ever seen in my life. You look like, I like like little, oh that's nice too. No, no, I'm taking, trying to take a picture, ready? <laughs> Hold on. Here, wait, let's take a picture, ready? Can I can see this feel? I feel so fucking nice. Well, I'm not gonna show them what floor do you live on. Right here, right here. But wait! There's more! So, it's very rare in the first two hours, as we say, that you're gonna fuck a girl. Like, take the girl home to the hotel too early. First half doesn't matter. Yeah. First half doesn't matter. Surprise, motherfucker. Two. Two. Okay. Jake's. So All right, bad. put the water on. I'm gonna take a picture. Okay. You uh, you mean a cold, cold water or hot? What are you talking? What kind of get water what kind question is that? <laughs> he goes, cold water or hot water? <laughs> take a video. No, I'm not taking a video. I'm gonna take a picture. Take a picture. Ready? <laughs> Wait, slowly, slowly. Slowly, bro. Slowly, bro. Peter, you're missing this little wet T-shirt contest. We need a super soaker or something. Okay. Nice. Got a nip exposed. Damn, I'm like halfway up now. See, okay, it's like automatic boner. Oh contrast, my God. contrast that. Wait, make it like tight. Like pull it. Like show your midsection. Like make this tight and show your midsection. Off. Yeah, bro, that's like a fucking. That looks like a. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could eat this look like a hair. <laughs> that was easy.